I just want to say a great big welcome to the online service. We are so glad that you could join us today. Today we're focused on eternity. This is where we'll talk about eternal truths, things that are very important for our long-term future. And it's also where we're going to be receiving from God the things you need today. Let's just praise the Lord together today with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength as we sing together. Man's and 
empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. When you came along, put me back together, and every desire is now satisfied. There's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you Lord, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, yes, I know it's true I'm not afraid
It's time to reach out to God. He loves you and he is concerned about your needs. He died to pay the price that you would live in health with your needs met. He is here to touch you. So reach out to him today. You know, I believe as we pray today on God's heart and on his mind is those with diabetes, suffering from diabetes, diabetics, and all kinds of symptoms that relate to that. Mm -hmm. I know there's a couple of different kinds, and I also know there's various stages and various outcomes. So all of these things today, that's what God wants to do something for now. So let's start to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just declare healing in the name of Jesus. Diabetes leaves in Jesus' name. We declare that healing in the name of Jesus. Touch them by the power of your spirit, Lord. Father, we pray for each sufferer's pancreas Mm. and the insulin situation, and sometimes there's insulin resistance. We stand against that in Jesus' name, and we pray, Father, that in every situation, the insulin would work properly, the insulin would do what it's been designed to do, and that nothing would hinder it, no insulin resistance, it all goes in Jesus' name. And Father, where there's been lack of circulation or lack of proper functioning of the Mm. extremities Mm. and the eyes because of this diabetes, we reverse that in Jesus' name and claim a complete healing for feet, for toes, for hands, for Mm. eyes, and every part of the physical body in Jesus' name. I pray for someone with heart palpitations. Lord, I'm asking that you would just touch them by the power of your spirit. Cause those palpitations to stop, to cease in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Father, we pray today for everybody really has been affected in the eyes. Their eyes are not working right. Mm. There could be glaucoma, could be, as I said, the effects of diabetes. Something with your eyes today. We stand against that and we claim full vision, full seeing, and full hearing too while we're on the subject and we stand against deafness or partial deafness ringing in the ears pain in the ears infection we command all of that to be healed today in jesus name yes all blockages anything that's hindering their hearing and their Mm. balance we declare it healed and restored in jesus name especially where this has led on to a dizziness and a vertigo. We bind that up in Jesus' name. We command that vertigo to cease, the dizziness to stop, and that everything comes back to peace. We say like Jesus to the storm, peace, be be still still in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray for headaches to be gone Mm. in the name of Jesus. Every form of headache, tension headaches to be gone, migraines to be gone in Jesus' name. Headache goes. Um, headache behind the eyes to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm praying for someone with an ovarian cyst. And I speak to that cyst and I declare that it will shrink from this Mm. day forth. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Ovarian cyst, shrink, disappear, be gone in Jesus' name. And has somebody been experiencing unusual stiffness in the joints? And it's not right. It's not the way it's supposed to be. I know that sometimes when you wake up, you might feel like you've got to stretch or something. But this is different. This is a real stiffness in the joints. And I rebuke that now and I loose those joints to be able to flow and to function freely, to be loosened up in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And today as we begin to worship God, we encourage you to speak the name of Jesus, to call on his name, yes. to receive what he's done for you and to let his glorious anointing flow into your life, take it into your physical body and allow that healing to affect its work in you and continue to say, I received healing today. I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Receive all that he has for you today. the name of Jesus over every heart 
and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Stay strong in spirit. 
In these times of fighting and praying through the things that are going on in our world, it's important to stay spiritually strong. If we stay strong, we will be able to make it through when things come against us. Proverbs 18.14 says, The strong spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness and trouble, but who can bear a broken spirit? We can get crushed in life's difficulties. To stand strong in this fight, we must use our spiritual weapons and armour. Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I will rise up and take the challenge Set for my life I will rise up and take the challenge It's time, I know it's time I will rise up and take the challenge Set for my life I will rise up and take the challenge It's time, I know it's time When called of God, we do have enemies that oppose us, but we are also told how we can overcome them. Our fight is against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. We do not fight against flesh and blood. We need to put on the whole armour of God, which enables us to stand strong and causes us to be victorious. We need our waist girded with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take the shield of faith to quench those fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let your prayers be directed, energized and sustained by the Holy Spirit. He has given us the weapons to vigorously oppose and bravely resist evil forces. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can deal with whatever comes against you. The Amplified Bible says, I am ready for anything. I'm equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. Let's be ready for anything that comes our way, knowing that in him we have the victory. can show us the way through. Know who you are in Him. You are an overcomer. None of us know what the future holds. We don't know what we will be called upon to endure. I remember vividly the day I received the phone call that my brother's truck was hit by a train and he was airlifted to hospital. He passed away, leaving behind a wife and three children. It was a difficult time. Faith in God does not mean that we won't be faced with challenges and problems. To survive, we have to learn how to encourage and strengthen ourselves in the Lord. you are facing today, you have what it takes to get through. God is on your side and you are more than a conqueror. God has given you authority over the enemy. You are a warrior. 
Isaiah says, He gives power to the faint and weary. Are you feeling a bit weary today? In him who has no might, he increases his strength, causing it to multiply. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When going through tough times, do not fear. God is with you and you will come out stronger.
how to receive from God, just like the woman with the issue of blood did. Today we're reading from Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. I know it's a familiar story, but we've got something important to learn from this today because God put this story in his written word so that we could all learn to receive like this woman did. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Verse 27. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Verse 29 now. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Verse 31. But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. Verse 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Let's pray. Father, as we open your word today, we're looking to you to help us understand this word to receive it in, to receive revelation of your word and to be able to walk in the fullness of how that word applies to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we want to learn exactly how the woman with the issue of blood received healing because at the end of the passage, Jesus doesn't say, my faith made you well. He didn't say, my power made you well. He didn't say, man, you are lucky. You got a healing. He didn't say, oh, this was part of God's eternal plan. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say, I wanted you to be an object lesson to all of these people. He didn't say that. He didn't say, well, I needed some filler in Mark chapter five because it didn't quite have enough words in it yet. He didn't say anything like that. He said to her, your faith has made you well, and it's obvious from this story that Jesus was on his way to do a miracle of raising this young girl from dying, eventually who died. And Jesus was going in that direction. But when the woman received, Jesus stopped. He turned around and he said, who touched me? Showing that he didn't know who it was. So it's obvious that he didn't initiate this miracle. So let's now look at this in a bit of detail, because I believe that if we give ourselves fully over to what we're about to read and what we're about to look at in the word of God, we can learn how she received what she needed on that day so that we can imitate it, so that we can receive from God what we need when we need something from God. So the theme today is very simple. How do you receive from God? Now, remember, God is not against you receiving. Jesus wasn't in the slightest bit against this woman, but we're going to find out that it was essential for her sake that he disclosed who it was and that she gave her testimony at the end of this miracle receiving process. So the first thing is, how do you receive from God? Number one, position yourself to hear God's word. Now, remember, that's not necessarily something she did because she heard somebody else told her and we're all responsible to tell others about Jesus. But it is important for each one of us too to keep ourselves in the position to hear from God, to keep hearing from God. And primarily that's about being somewhere where the word of God is spoken. This can happen for you in church. It can happen for you as you read the Bible, as you're praising God at home, in a Bible study or Bible discussion, and you're on the internet watching a preacher, listening to Bible discussions. 
There are lots of ways the word of God can come to you. But I want to encourage you, stick with your church service. Stick with watching the online service. Keep the word of God going in. Review it each week. Review, review, review. Make notes. Make sure you know what the word of God is saying, because that's the only way faith can come. And that is how she received her miracle. You see, faith comes by hearing. So let's read these scriptures. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she heard about Jesus. What comes by hearing? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now listen to what it says in Romans 10, 14, then 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So we all need preachers. That's why God called and gifted preachers and put them in the body of Christ. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God or hearing by the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing an anointed word from God. This is so important. So as you're listening, bang, the gift of faith can be transferred to you from heaven via a preacher while you're reading, while you're in a discussion, sometimes even in worship. Sometimes that word just comes alive and that gift of faith is there. That is what's important. That's what we should focus our life on. Amen. It's like Mary and Martha. Martha was busy serving, but Mary sat at Jesus' feet and Jesus said, one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Jesus could multiply bread and fish. He can provide. But Mary chose to sit at his feet because that's the only place you can get faith. And faith is how you receive the miracle power of God. And remember, it's not an inconvenience to God to do a miracle for you or through you. It's not. Jesus likes miracles. He likes doing miracles. And all of us that have ever been used in the doing of a miracle certainly enjoy it. And we would love to do it again. Amen. So she heard about Jesus. So for us, what can we do? We can position ourselves to hear the word of God. The second thing is, how do you receive from God? Number two, say it. Mark 5, 28, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. What she heard, she mused on it. She thought about it. She revolved it in her mind. She kept thinking about it, kept standing on it. And a revelation came of what she would need to do to release that faith. And the first part of that release was saying it. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be well. Now, listen to what Jesus said about this. Mark eleven twenty three, 23. For assuredly, I say to you. I'm going to count up the says. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Now, in this story, Jesus talked about believe once and he talked about doesn't doubt in his heart once. But four times the word say is in that verse and three times the word say relates to us. Now, Jesus was operating in himself when he said, I say to you, because he knows that saying it is a release of faith. But he told us, whoever says to this mountain, doesn't that in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. We've got to say it. Amen. So the woman, when she said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She spoke the desired result. Her mouth overflowed the faith that was in her heart. She articulated with words what her inner sight saw. She got some insight when she heard from Jesus. She thought about it. 
She maybe knew some of the Old Testament scriptures. She had probably been praying for this healing for 12 years because that's how long she'd been seeking healing through the physicians. And now the answer has come to her. It was shown her. She had a revelation of what to do as she heard the word of God. It came clear. If I do this kind of reminds me of one of our Aussie preachers I heard. He had a very bad back. And he wasn't a novice by any means to the things of God. And one day he got the gift of faith, the revelation, and that he knew that he had to not only receive his healing right then through that word, but he had to put it into action. He had to act on it. So he went out into the backyard. He picked up the biggest rock he could find and he threw it all around the backyard, which normally would have just almost crippled him, but he did it by faith because he saw a revelation. If I pick up the big rock and throw it all around, I will be healed. Amen. And that's what we need to do too. This is what Jesus said in John 5, 19 to 20. Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. So it's important that we see something with God while we're in the Word of God. This is confirmation of that gift of faith coming. It comes as a revelation, as an insight, an insight. Amen. And in Mark 4, 24, it says, take heed what you hear. In other words, to look at it, to see it. It's the same word Jesus used when he said, I do what I see with my father. Jesus said, see what you are hearing. See it. Make sure you can see something when you're in the word of God. Revolve it in your mind. Think about it. Muse on it. Meditate in the word of God until something is revealed to you. Remember what he said to Joshua, meditate in the word of God day and night that you may observe. Observe means to see. So I want to encourage you, take hold of what you hear, get that revelation and start to speak it because speaking it is crucially important. Now, remember when God created the earth, Genesis chapter one, verses six and seven say, Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made firmament. The first thing he created was light, but we've all seen that one so much. I thought I'd do the second one today. But the first use of spoken words in the Bible, we remember first use law is very important. The first use of words in the Bible was not primarily for a conversation about, how you going, mate? Yeah, not bad, mate. How are you? It wasn't to gain information. It was to create. There was some level of communication in it, but it was to communicate a creative statement. Let there be light. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Then it says, thus God made the firmament. So the creative act followed the declaration of the revealed word of God. Amen. God revealed what was in his heart through his words, and then it was created. So how do you receive from God? Number one, position yourself to hear God's word. And number two, say it. Say what your faith is is showing you through your insight, through revelation, through a quickening word in the Holy Spirit, whatever it is, say it. And number three today is do it. So when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. So chronologically, the sequence is she heard, she said it, then she did it. She came behind him in the crowd. In other words, he didn't see her coming. He didn't know who did this. Remember that this is someone using their faith to draw an answer from God. You can do this. Amen.
Remember, this was not easy for her. She was weakened physically through blood loss for 12 years. She was weakened emotionally through 12 years of failure. She was weakened financially, that's for sure, and that would weaken your confidence and your self-assurance and your sense of security. 12 years of failure. She was weakened in her confidence because a bleeding woman was not allowed into the crowd. She was under a quarantine lockdown. We're starting to get an idea of what that's like. Except when we've been locked down, everyone around us was locked down. But in her case, she was locked down for year after year after year, unclean. And everybody around her was free. It was demoralizing. It was difficult. But the entrance of God's word gave her light She saw what to do and then she did it. She had to push through the crowd. She had to go where she really wasn't supposed to be. She wanted to remain undercover and secret, but Jesus declared, who touched me? Amen. As an illustration, we think about Elisha. He wanted that double portion. He spoke that double portion. But when the mantle of Elijah fell, he picked it up and he struck the water with it. And he said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? He struck the Jordan in an act of faith. That was very important. When Peter was in the boat and Jesus was walking on the water, Peter yelled out, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come to you on the water. He spoke the words. He heard a word from God come but had to take the action and actually step out of the boat and start to walk on water to go to Jesus. Now, remember, he only sank because he took his eyes off Jesus. He took his eyes off the living word of God. And that's why he began to sink. Then he cried out to Jesus, save me, Lord. And he came back up on top of the water and walked back to the boat. Amen. So how do you receive from God? Position yourself to hear the word of God. You get a revelation, start saying it. Then you start doing what was revealed to you. You do what you've seen in the spirit realm and what you've said. Then number four, receive it. Because nothing would have happened if you just touched him without drawing that power. She received that power. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. She received. And I want to encourage you right now in times of worship, receive. Let that power come. Receive. Receive right now. Just lift your hands to God. Receive that power. Receive that anointing. Just let that glory of God come all over you today. Receive. You can receive when you're by yourself. You can receive by pressing through. You can receive and hands are laid on you. You can receive in worship. You can receive at any time. You're listening to a preacher. The gift of faith comes. Just reach out to God and receive. I receive. I receive. Amen. You've got to receive it. And that's very important. Think about Esther in the Bible. In Esther chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, it's an illustration for us of how to receive. Now, it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes. Now, that for us is making sure we're covered in the robe of righteousness. We're washed by the blood of Jesus. No elephants in the throne room. No unconfessed and unforgiven sin, in other words. And then you go in there knowing that you have acceptance and that you can have boldness in the throne room because of the cleansing of the blood of Jesus, cleanse conscience, putting off the old, putting on the new. She went and stood in the inner court of the king's palace across from the king's house while the king sat on his royal throne in the royal house facing the entrance of the house. Verse 2. So it was when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. That was a great key because if he didn't hold that out, she would die for approaching uninvited. So she approached. But I want to tell you right now, you always have an invitation to come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. If you have committed sin, you come there to obtain mercy and then you find grace to help you in your time of need. If you've struggled with sin or are struggling with sin, the grace you need is the grace to overcome that. That's a good place to start. Amen. The king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand 
Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given you up to half the kingdom. She was granted what she came for. The story of Esther is in the Bible for you, for you to see this and understand that when you, as God's daughter, approach him in the name of Jesus, washed by the blood of Jesus, accepted in the beloved, that his ears are open to you and all the promises of God are yes and amen as you come in Jesus. Amen. Now, as long as you're not asking God to help you rob banks or flatten the guy's house next door, that's the kind of thing that won't produce any good fruit. We've got to come in the name, in the character, in the personality of Jesus with our heart fixed on God, holy into the throne of holy grace. Amen. And then we come there in that attitude. And if what you're asking for is good, and if it's holy, you'll be able to do this with a clean conscience, with a full heart, in the full assurance of faith that what you're asking for is good. And if you're asking for healing, you're asking for God to move a church, you're asking for provision for what you need, you're asking for protection in this time of pandemic and things that are going on, you're asking God for his blessing in the people you're praying for, in the people in your home group, connect group, church, your family, whatever. You're asking God to move by the outpouring of his spirit to open the eyes of those around you. These are all good things and you can receive it. In the middle of all that, if you want to receive a new house, you can. If you want to receive a new car, you can. If you want to receive whatever it is, maybe you need to go on a holiday, you can receive provision for that Take your holiday because this is good. You can receive from God according to this. Amen. Because remember in these stories, neither the king that was the king of Esther nor Jesus initiated this. The recipient initiated it. And so Esther just got the okay from her king, saved her generation. Amazing story. And if you get an okay from God, He can work in your circumstances, your situation, bring miracles to your family, miracles to your life, the healing you need, the finance you need to make things work in your life and the salvation of your loved ones, whatever you need. God is saying, yes, the door is open to you. Yes, you can receive today. So how do you receive from God? So far we've seen, position yourself to hear from him. Then when you get a revelation, say it. Do what you're seeing and hearing with him and what you're saying. Number four, receive it. And number five, tell it. Testify giving glory to God. This is a very important point or Jesus wouldn't have stopped on his way to Jairus' house. He could have just waved behind him and said, be blessed and kept going. But he stopped. Turn around. Let's read it. Mark 5 verses 30 to 34. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? Verse 32. And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, you know, that's partly because she shouldn't be in the crowd, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, that that to me pictures worship, and told him the whole truth. There's a lot to say here, but it is important for us to pick up that Jesus knew that her confirming it with a testimony, with a worshipful attitude in a way that brings him glory, was so important. And remember, your words carry this power when they're spoken in the name of Jesus by revelation of the Holy Spirit through meditating and learning and hearing the word of God. You speak that word. It is all powerful, all authoritative and no weapon formed against it can ever 
prosper because no weapon could ever match the power of God's kingdom. And Jeremiah 1.12 says that God watches over his words to perform it. Amen. So in conclusion, I'm going to go through it again. How do you receive from God? Number one, this is what you can do. Position yourself to hear what God is saying. It won't be coming out of the nightly news. It won't be coming out of reality television. It'll be coming from preaching, from your quiet time, from Christian music. It'll be coming from you sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to sermons, listening to the word of God preached, staying with us in the online service, reviewing it, studying it, staying in the word of God, worshiping God, staying in this thing with God and giving it 100%. Because remember, Jesus said, it's the measure you put into this process is the measure it will work for you. You want a good result? Give it a good effort. Amen. You want a meager result? Then just give it a meager effort. But I'm telling you in these last days and what is ahead of us now, you need the healing power of God because medical science will run out of answers to some of the things that we face. And there'll be no answer. There'll be no one able to help you apart from God and his power. And of course, those in the church of Jesus Christ who are called by God to speak his word and to disciple you and teach you how to receive from God. So position yourself to hear what God is saying to you. Number two, say it. Say what you are seeing while you're meditating with God's word. Number three, do it. Do what you've seen in the spirit and what you've said. Number four, receive it. And number five, tell it. Testify to it, giving glory to God. And I encourage you, when you've received a miracle, tell it all your life. Keep telling it over and over again. People might have heard it before, but find new people and tell it again. Because this always gives glory to God. And it always confirms in your own heart that you are healed, that you have provision, that God is your protector, provider, that is making the way for you, that is promoting you, that is doing everything that you need in your life comes from him. Amen. So what I also want to say today is salvation, being saved eternally. Let's face it, if you were healed today physically, which I've seen people that aren't Christians healed, if you even had provision today from God and if you had promotion at work and you had so many good things happening around your life, but in eternity, you ended up in hell, that would not be a good outcome. So that's why I say the most important miracle ever to receive from God is what we call salvation. Jesus said, it's being born again. It's becoming a new creation in Christ, a new person. Amen. And how do we do this? We hear it first in the word of God, And this is what Jesus said in John 6, 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will in no way cast out. Another translation, I will never reject them. In John 3, 3, Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In verse 5, he said, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And in verse 5, Seven, he said, don't be surprised that I say to you, you must be born again. Amen. We need to hear that. And we need to hear the word that says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we know now from this verse by revelation that it's important for us to realize, number one, we won't be rejected if we come to Jesus, but it's important when we do come to him, we call on him. And another scripture says to as many as received him, we've got to receive him. So the second thing is, say it, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So we've got to say that Jesus is my Lord. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. Then we do it. We follow the good shepherd. And Jesus said these two amazing scriptures. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. That's what you hear. Jesus is a good shepherd and he is a shepherd, which means he has a staff, amen, and he can lead you to safety and provision, but sometimes he has to correct you if you wander off. And then in John chapter 7, 27 to 28, he said this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Amen. And finally, we need to tell it. We need to receive salvation. We need to follow Jesus and do it as a Christian. And then we need to tell people. And Peter said this in 1 Peter 3.15, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. Not as a great guy and a Santa Claus in heaven. You're not going to be worshiping worship and you're not going to be praising praise. You're going to actually Be thinking of Jesus as your Lord. In other words, when you come to worship him, be like the woman with the issue of blood. She fell before him on the ground. Physically, we fall before him in our spirit, man. We worship him in spirit. And our attitude is the same of Jesus to his father. Not my will, but yours be done. Hebrews 5, 9, he is able to give eternal salvation to all who obey him. So 1 Peter says you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Amen. That's part of telling it. This is how I got saved and it will work for you too. Amen. So if you haven't done that today, you haven't been born again, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And if you say this prayer based on these scriptures, You can receive salvation, which is just another word for safety and rescue through the new birth by being born again. You can take Jesus as your Lord, confess he is Lord, and then by faith declare that you are following him as your good shepherd. So say this after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I turn from my old life. I put off the old man that you died to get rid of. Today, Lord Jesus, I confess you are my Lord. I receive you as my Saviour. I put on the new man as I'm being born again. And I declare today, by faith in you, And by your wonderful grace, I will follow you from this day forward as my good shepherd. I believe I am born again. I believe my name has gone into the Lamb's Book of Life. My old life has been expunged. I am completely forgiven. A new creation And I'm going with Jesus when he comes for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's amazing. You said that prayer today. I believe you've been born again. It's important, as I keep saying, to tell someone. If you've got no one to tell, please write to us and tell us. And we'll know who to pray for. And we'll believe with you for the supernatural work of God to guide you from this point forward. God bless. Thanks a lot for listening. This concludes our service today. We are so glad to have had your company with us today. We love you. God loves you. And we pray that you will have an awesome week. And remember the online service is here for you. We want you to focus on eternity. We want you to keep your eyes on Jesus and stay in the word of God because the days ahead may be tough, but God's got all the answers. So this is Dave and Rosanna from the Eternity Online Service. Until we see you again next time, right now from us it is... Bye. Bye.